to this video song frontier video now here for your uh, viewing pleasure I have another unboxing video um, I'm going to unbox this very oddly shaped package and um, what I'm gonna do with this package is kind of tell you what came inside this package and what package I ordered off of eBay now um, Usual rules apply when unboxing um, packages. Our package is <laughs> first of all, you need a cup of tea. Ah, that is good. It's fantastic. But a cup of tea is the most essential thing on unboxing something. As I said um, in my last video, you can also drink iron brew, but there's nothing quite like a good cup of Scottish blend. Right, um, you also need the package you're unbox uh, unboxing and one of these. This is a non-ballistic, non-firearm but still, it could be used as an offensive weapon. So remember people, you do not unpackage something while walking along the street, otherwise the police will come and get you, they will put you to the jail, and then one day you'll be in the prison shit, well, never mind. Um, okay, uh, also, if your name is Ian Duncan Smith, I know that you are not responsible to handle a knife. Anyway, let's uh, get ahead and unbox this thing. If you need a uh, responsible, if you need a responsible adult to do this for you, contact my good friend Elmo Three. He may not be responsible, but he is the most responsible person I do. <laughs> He's one of the most responsible people I do know. M one of the most level-headed, actually. Um, yeah, I'd recommend you watch his videos. His political ones make so much sense. Alright. So I've managed to get into the package... And this package is tightly packaged. Oh. Okay, well the first thing I uh, got given was some bubble wrap. Lovely, lovely bubble wrap. And the second thing I was given is um, a power supply. It says AC adapter on it. Which is fine enough. Doesn't say what kind of AC adapter, but as you can see, it comes free with this um, scuffed dart motif design on it. I don't know if you can see that. I'm no holding it up close enough. I fear. As you can see, it's got kind of like this scuffed brown shit motif, which is uh, rather fetching for some people. Personally, it's not to my taste. I would prefer to have the um, nice shiny black motif but you never know I mean some people are into that it's like the Game Boy Advance tribal edition was basically like you know it basically kind of looked like um, somebody's wee baby brother had managed to get hold of a silver one and make merry with a sharpie all over it <coughs> but somehow managed to mess the screen which would be miraculous anyway there's more in here 
And that's when you emptied the package. Now this was very oddly shaped. I actually thought this was a ThinkPad docking station. But I was wrong! <laughs> so, instead of telling you what it ain't, how about I tell you what it am? This is a compact armada M300 and that is my cue to exit okay so as you saw I uh, unboxed um, a compact armada M300 now it turns out that the compact armada M300 like the EVO N400C is basically it's an ultra portable and it comes with this very nice wee slice. Now, let me take you a wee tor and a wee torter down the slice first of all before uh, we talk about the laptop. On the left hand side, we have um, a USB 1 port, AC adapter, Kensington lock slot, speaker. And then we have a catch for the floppy drive bay. You can actually eject the floppy drive. On the front we have the floppy drive. And this originally came with a CD drive. But I nicked a DVD drive from one of the HP computers that I've been unable to sell. If someone wants to buy it, you know, I'm sure I can figure something out. But at the moment, this has got DVD. On the right hand side we have the catch for the multi-bay drive. The right speaker. The eject button from uh, the slice. Um, Crevins, I'm not entirely sure. Kind of looks like another Kensington. Hang on, no, I think that must be the actual Kensington lock slot. These guys must be, um, these guys must be some sort of vents, actually. Herp derp. And, uh, we've got, um, headphone out and microphone out. And then on the back, we have um, LPT parallel port. Then next to that, we have a regular docking station port, which you know, basically leads me to believe that these slices aren't docking stations. I mean, they kind of act like it, in a way. But Windows certainly doesn't kind of act like it. Sure, you can run the machine without them, but it's like you can dock, in, you can dock your docking station into a docking station, into a docking station, into a docking station, into a docking station, into a docking station. Herp derp. Um, <clears throat> I think you can only do the recursive docking station thing once. Um, then you have um, RS-232 serial. And then um, a kind of worn out looking VGA port. Now, when I got this machine, it was really, really dusty. It was kind of sticky as well. I mean, I had to kind of wipe it all down with a, a wet wipe. Um, okay, let's have a look at this. And then we have um, separate PS2 keyboard and mouse parts. You know, so kind of like a regular docking station. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of put this down here. I'm going to plug it in because uh, this, the machine doesn't actually report itself as having a battery, uh, which is you know, could be worrying. Um, on the bottom, it just kind of looks like your regular. Okay, there's a lock there. Don't know what any of that means. Um, then you've got your actual docking station. Yeah, it's just kind of the bottom of the docking station part. And then 
that there has got a picture of a desktop on it. But, or something like that. Anyway, and then obviously on the top here, you have um, the plug for the slice. I guess, I mean, they call this a slice because it's a slice as opposed to a docking station. And it still seems a wee bit minky there. So, yeah, kind of brownie coloured. It's, yeah. Oh well, I'm kind of... Yeah, I didn't kind of get a chance to dust down the docking station. I got a chance to, you know, attack the laptop with a wet wipe. Okay. Now, talking of the laptop... Well, there it is. Okay, so, I mean, it's it's kind of a nice wee compact machine. It feels really... It's really quite sleek. Um... So let's let's have a look at it. Now, I mean, this kind of tells me that um, <coughs> the laptop is best used with the slice because there are some parts replicated on here, but others that aren't. So, for example, you have here an Ethernet port, which is not actually on the docking station. Or the slice, sorry. You do have a power port. You have um, an on switch, a vent, Kensington lock slot, hard disk tray. On the front, you have headphone and microphone sockets, um, power and charging lights. And then on the right side, you have a PCM CIA card slot, just the one. More of it, oh, that could actually be speaker, sorry. Uh, one of these could be a speaker. You've got, well, probably a vent and a speaker. And then you have a 56k modem port, and this kind of looks a wee bit worn around it. And the machine, by and large, is in good condition, but you can, you can kind of tell it's... It's not been tripped as well as it could have been. I mean, this aluminium strip with the compact logo on it. Let's see if I can get it to focus up. It's quite scratched. I don't think it's... There we go. It is quite scratched, which is a bit of a shame because, you know, on the E500 and, and my other compacts that have this, you know, it's actually quite... You know, it's it's not scratched. And I, I don't like to touch it. You know, I like to kind of keep it shiny. <laughs> Although I've not quite got to the stage where I've, you know, kind of got the polish out and, you know, like... <laughs> um, right, okay, so on the back, we have, um, basically the spaces where the docking station kind of plugs in. Whoops, let's get the laptop into the actual, um, frame there. Would help. A uh, USB 1 port. RS-232 serial port. Parallel part, VGA part, infrared, which again and kind of looks yeah, a bit sticky. That could do with being attacked by wet wipe. And then I've got, obviously we're back to the left. Now to actually put the compact on the slice. Oh, before I do that, um, there's obviously um, the fitting on the bottom for the slice. So to put the compact. Um, M3, I'm at M300 on the slice. Basically, what you do, you kind of set it at an angle, slide. You see those two bits here? No, you can't. These two catches here. What you do, you slide it in, and then the machine will kind of click. What you'll then do, set it down, and then push it down. And that's the machine, it's mounted on the slice. And for some reason, sometimes it likes to switch itself on. Ergo. Now, now there's not much actually installed on here. I probably should have done the video and um, showed you what was installed already, but unfortunately, um, well... Not unfortunately, actually. It was a very fortunate thing. My uh, friends called, actually, uh, on Skype. My good friends, um, Matthew H16, the Paramount Galaxy, as well as um, 
some random man called Declan. Now I'm only getting on. Um, and oh yeah, and Elmo three as well, as as well as um, a mutual, well, a mutual friend of mine and uh, Matthew said. Yeah, so um, as you can see, I've installed the drivers. The um, OS enhancements have been installed, hence the compact OEM logo and the operating system. Do do do. And I've chosen Windows 98 for this because specifications of this machine, oh yes, compact. Of course, would I do it any other way? Answer, no I would not. So here it is, it's just kind of basic Windows 98 at the moment, nothing much else is installed. There's, I think there's uh, WinRAR, oh and there's MS-DOS Rail Mode, which is um, on this machine migrated to the start menu. I've shown you what that does on other compact machines like the Armada 7750MT. Basically it boots into a Rail Mode MS-DOS thing and then you can just play DOS games. 600 megahertz machines can still play some DOS games relatively well. Chex Quest, for example, that run quite sluggish under Windows on the Acer Travelmate uh, 522 TX. Chex Quest, by the way, is um, actually. Do you know what? I think we're going to try it. I I think that you know trying it might not be such a bad idea. I wonder if it has an MS DOS installer. I'm going to find out because there's nothing else installed in here you know might as well do something interesting this was a discovery i found actually on um uh the freaking d youtube channel lazy game reviews and um you know i was really quite impressed with it basically what Chex quest is it you know kind of came as part of you know with Chex serial in the 90s uh, you know that was that's an american serial and um Basically, it's based. It's based on the Doom engine. Yes, the same game that y'all know and love, Doom. And um, it's really quite interesting. It's quite funny. Windows ninety eight is now starting your MS DOS program. Right. Okay. So I have mouse support, CD ROM support, and enough memory to go around. Do you want to return to normal mode to run Windows application again? No. Why? Why would... Seriously? Alright, okay, I'm going to run it from the CD-ROM. You know, just because I'm... Because that's how I roll. I'm a bad man. So naturally, it's gonna dip on the sound. But, I don't know. Ain't nobody got time for that. Right, okay. Um, what are we gonna do? It's no sound. I'm sure there'll be sound if I actually, you know, set it up properly like a good wee boy, but I've not done that. But already I can tell this is playing a lot better on um, this than it had ever did on the Acer. I, I really kind of felt awkward playing this on the Acer. It's a Doom part, and the uh, name of the game, you've got to kind of uh, beam aliens back to where they belong, like this wee guy here. There you go. Um, you don't kill them as such. You beam them back to the dimension. I mean, the game advertises itself as being completely non-violent, and I guess it wants to make itself part of a balanced breakfast, and... You know, uh, what I do, you know, as a com as a business owner, you know, I feel that, you know, I do have responsibilities. Um, so, you know, as as a business owner, I would say that, yes, a, um, a balanced breakfast does actually include um, an MS-DOS game. Every child should be playing MS-DOS games. Look, okay, I knew how to do this. I did this on the Acer Travel Mate. Right. There we go.
There we go. I do like the compact real mode DOS thing. I mean, why we didn't have it on our Presario, I will never know. But I know one thing. I am going to look for, you know, drivers that might suggest such a thing exists, you know. Because, I mean, a 200 megahertz uh, K6 II, I reckon, will run DOS games really quite well. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Kind of like nightclubs in the north of England. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you... There we go. Yeah, dafty. Come on. Oh, there you are. And instead of it going red when you get shot, it goes green. I like that. It's, it's basically doom. You know, to all intents and purposes, it's doom. These are where the buckets of radioactive waste would be, but instead they seem to be canisters of some sort of gas. Man, that gas is noble. <laughs> I love that. Ain't nobody taking my eight from me. Oh, yeah. I'm not coming down for days. Die, yellow belly. Is this where I just came from? I would say yes. Yes, it is. Herp, derp. Aha, uh -huh. now here we go. Bye bye. Do you know what? Before I do go here, I. Ah, I want to get more enemies. There's apparently meant to be secret corridors, so yeah. Oh my goodness, that thing. Don't you understand? There we go. Don't you understand the meaning of go back to your home planet? This is kind of like... <laughs> it's kind of like, if the, you know, if these were, you know, illegal... If, if these were, you know, people of, you know, from different countries, you know, immigrants. This would be like, you're playing as a BMP. Oh yes, I like this one. Hang on, that's an inanimate object. Herp derp. I do like that though, when, you know, you when you run out of ammo, unless you get yourself some more, you've got a spoon, you know? <laughs> Actually works really quite well. Somehow the spoon has sci-fi properties that allow, you know, you hit an alien enough times with one spoon, you know, they get sent back to their home planet. But, to, aha, yes, now, here we go. This is a secret corridor. Um, I just picked up a basket that has no ammo in it. Derp. Um... Kind of like Wolfenstein, you've, you've got to, you know, kind of be searching against the walls and um, what have you. Uh, you've got to love it software. 84, 87. That wasn't a secret area? Oh, you've got to be kidding on. This works so much better on here than it ever did on that Ace and on the Travelmate 522TX. There we go. The mission continues. Thank you for playing Check's Quest. Well, you know, you're quite welcome. Now to get back to Windows, what you do is you quite simply type exit. And then what will happen is I'll have a help of my tea. <clears throat> Plug. And okay, and then the computer will boot back to Windows 98. Well, it's doing that.
Oh, and there we go. So the thing about the machine working on the slice, it doesn't act like a regular docking station. There's no eject option. I don't know if it's because I'd set it up all wrong, but, you know... Well, it would have helped if I'd have actually connected my Ethernet cable. There you go. And just plop that in. Ooh. And then, of course, we have the machine. you know, ready for us to do, you know, whatever we want. World domination. No. Uh, world do yeah, I'm probably going to have to restart this. I'm not as lucky as uh, Luke Miller when it comes to connecting Windows 98 machines to the internet. Or, on the other hand, I actually am. I'm online. Ah, the magic of working with a compact computer. Way before HP bought them out. Internet Explorer 5, who else remembers this? Nostalgia. Well, I'll give you a hint. Doesn't work as well as it used to. Now, I don't know if I said this, my memory is terrible. Perhaps I should eat some eat some RAM. But the um, specs of this computer, this is a Pentium 3 uh, with a 600 megahertz clock speed. It has got 128 megs of RAM. It has got um, an 11 gig hard disk, or that could be 12. 11 to 12 gig hard disk. And it's got ATI Rage graphics. I've not actually checked to see what memory we're looking at yet, so I will do that now. ATI Rage LT Pro. Let's have a look. Oh, and it's not going to give me a memory reading. That's very nice. Gee, thanks. So, basically, what I'm going to do now is just go away and install, going to go away and install the rest of my applications. And uh, then hopefully that'll be that, you know, spend some games on here. I was hoping to put a 20 gig hard disk in, but um, I uh, don't have the right tools to actually jemmy the docking station off of this machine. So... Looks like I might be needing more tools. But, um, nevertheless, um, that has been a wee tour of the Compaq Armada M300, um, as well as the unboxing. So, I'd like to thank you all for watching my videos, and if you liked what you saw, then please feel free to subscribe. Um, instructions on how to do so will, of course, follow. While you're there, please feel free to peruse my channel, and um, if you do that, oh, and I hope you'll all join me for my next video. Thank you for watching.